the Centre for Brexit Policy. You've released a report today basically saying <clears throat> that there's a problem with institutional Britain. There's a problem with the civil service. There's a problem with many people in senior ranks in British society. It's a defeatist mentality that's been there for years. Yes, the phrase, the, the word we use in the report, and it's written by a number of academics, historians, etc., so it's not just a political diatribe, it's a genuine look back over the last 300 years. And two points they make is, one is, the problem we face today is what's called uh, a basically a, a limiting sense uh, to the way that civil servants think about their country. They think that this is all about managing decline. Uh, and it's what we call declinism, the idea that you think that all the UK is doing is going down, so the only thing you can do is cleave to others, the European Union, and somehow just manage this disparate problem that we go away. I, I, it's ironic in the UK, really, where many of those who are responsible in perpetual government, civil service and others that are, that are there, have this very low sense of the UK. So in a way, Brexit was a revolt by the unexalted ordinary public who said we've never stopped believing in our country we just wish everybody yes. else that's charged yes. oh, with running it look, would I mean, do I... the same so this is really about how do we get those in charge to believe fundamentally the UK is in an incredibly good place and to make the changes that but come here's out of the, Brexit but here's the point I understand what you're saying and I think sort of Suez was that big moment oh. after Suez you know suddenly everything changed and you're right, it is managed decline, and it's been that for decades and decades and decades. You know, your report also talks about the Whitehall blob, it talks about the woke mentality, it talks about real obstructionism, actually, you know, stopping, in, 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 in effect, ministers from doing things. But here's the point. You know, Mrs Thatcher famously said, advisers advise, ministers decide. Why do we not have a government, a prime minister, cabinet ministers who impose their will upon the civil service and tell them what to do on pain of being sacked. Well, I think the problem comes back to the beginning of this government when we hit the pandemic. I think it really, it really took a lot of the steam out of the government because so much was spent, so much was done during those two years. We lost two, two and a half years. You could argue that it's as though we started this year for the first time, having just won the election. So the government has to have a sense of urgency about it because we don't have a lot of time. Mm. So you're right, there has been some obstructionism because lots of people didn't want Brexit. But I think the biggest thing that the government should take from this paper, it's that there is a necessity to lead. It's very important that the government sets out clearly that it intends to make the most of what happened back in 2016. Is it capable of doing well, that? I think it is capable of doing it. I published a report a year and a half ago on regulatory change. Huge report about how we, re -co we come back to And none of it's been law. done, Ian. Well, it, it's at last been given. It's been talked about. It, well, it's last been given and it's going to get a bill slot to do this, but it's got to be spread over bits and pieces. I'll give you one example. I mean, unless we can show those of us on our side of the argument, unless we can show the public clear, identifiable benefits of Brexit, then I can see, after the next election, a Labour, Lib Dem, SNP coalition getting us back aligned with a single market and would be Brexit in name only. Why not cut the 5% VAT mm. on fuel? A clear, identifiable win that we couldn't do without Brexit. Why would this government not do it? Well, I'd do it tomorrow. Uh, the only problem they have, of course, in Northern Ireland, because of the protocol which we are now going to legislate to change, arbitrarily if necessary, they can't introduce it in Northern Ireland because they've allowed that to be captured by the ECJ. But they should be doing it. I personally would make an even bolder cut to the whole process. Mm. The answer right now is, facing this uh, problem at the moment of cost of living, two elements that I would do straight away, and I think the government should be bold in doing this. One is to go to VAT and say, look, we promised you we would do it, and when we left, we're going to do it. Number yep. two, we're also going to cut taxes, because the taxes are too high, yeah. and, should and we... get them down. And that's a domestic it, issue, but that's what we should be doing. And while we're at it, you and I both know that one of the reasons, and you identified this on the night of the Brexit vote, the big turnouts on council estates all over the country, you were the first on this, and much of that was controlling our borders. People concerned about the levels of legal and illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. Has the time come to complete Brexit and leave the ECHR? Well, the first thing we have to have is we have to have a proper UK Bill of Rights that gives people access to their rights, but here in the UK, <coughs> judged by UK courts. That's the first thing. 
And then after that, we're, we should be in the position to be able to say, look, we will stick by what our basic human rights codes are, but we don't need to refer anything or get a referral back from the court uh, that is exactly the ECHR court. And therefore, we should be simply saying we can do it here in the UK. And that's a debate that we should have and settled and get that through. And I'm told now they're going to And you think we can do that well, and, and stay part of the ECHR? Yeah, well, I think we signed up to the ECHR, but I don't think we should actually accept their judgments from their court. <laughs> we may as well leave it then. Well, we're in essence, we're creating our own version, which will be here run by UK judges. That's the key element we have to do. And it's got to be bold. You know, we should be doing it. Yeah. Are, are we saying, as this nameless judge uh, from uh, deep in the bowels of the, of, the, of the Court of Rights, actually then overturned what mm. all the learned judges from the of our own court, Supreme right Court, Supreme court. The Supreme court yeah. decided was OK and lawful, are we saying that on a whim they were able to cancel that? Yes, yes this we are. This has caused complete mayhem. Yes. That has to stop. So this is really a good opportunity for us all to right. say, well, enough, we're going to bring that back to the Final thought, UK. Ian Duncan Smith. Do you actually believe that the leadership of your party has got the guts to do these things? Well, I want them to do it, and I, I believe. Ask that. Well, I believe they can do it, and they should, and will do it. But the question is, when? That's my question. Do it now. We should have a complete bonfire of the nonsenses that we left the EU over, and get on with it. There are such rewards out there. I was talking the other day about setting up medical tech here as the hub for the rest of the world. Many of the scientists that didn't support Brexit. I've now realised in my report that I published that actually this opens the door to us mm, well, to set our own rates. Well, I, I listen, Huge competition. I so understand, I understand all obvious. of these things. I understand all of these things. Thank you for joining us here on GB News.